Charlie is going to be lighting the Charnwood stove. Seeing as it's so miserable outside, it's not cold in here at all. <laughs> it's actually quite temperate, but any so excuse, yeah. yeah. What we'll do is we'll keep think... this pushed um, right in, so we'll let as little oxygen in there as possible, so it'll just burn away. So the more it's oxygen, slowly. the more flame, is that right? Yeah, because fire needs oxygen. Looks like a proper little campfire teepee. Yeah, so we've got some just kindling, which just smashed up wooden pallets from all the deliveries that we had. <laughs> Good thinking. So we're using them up, mm -hmm. and then we've just got some uh, dried wood yep. in there. We'll get that nice and well lit, let that put halfway for a bit, and then we'll put these logs on top, which will get a nice bit of cosy warmth. Mm -hmm. Lovely. So we'll get that working. Cosy. We need to stick a doggy bed in front of the fire because I know a couple of young men that might quite like it. into the lounge and this is the view that I'm faced with <laughs> I know it was your birthday yesterday young man but you have to stop being so ridiculous <laughs> you're rude you are so rude <gasps> what kind of dog lies like this you know, according to pet psychologists, Char, this means that they are so trusting and comfortable in their environment, yeah. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon, my darlings. I'm a little bit late starting the vlog today. It's a Monday, I was about to say Monday morning. It is a Monday afternoon and this morning has been a lot of laptop time, a lot of emails, a couple of work calls and a lot of um, kind of online browsing of furniture, so nothing that you missed out on. You will have just seen a couple of clips, um, I think the, from the weekend, did I shoot much over the weekend? I probably just put a bit of music over a couple of weekend clips because I decided to take the whole weekend off vlogging, which was quite nice, and I think maybe when I take a couple of days off, it takes me a little bit longer to get back into the back into the swing of it. I've been getting a lot of comments lately saying, Josie, we're gonna miss your vlogs so much when you stop doing daily vlogs, and um, I'm kind of toying up what I'm gonna do when lockdown is over, and is there going to be like an official date when lockdown is over? I don't know. It feels like at least here in the UK, life, they're trying to make life go back to normal. I, I don't think it's ever really going to be normal again. I don't know. It's who knows what the future holds, but I feel like they're trying to do it all really slowly, like little bit by little bit. I know so many um, companies that I talk to, for example, beauty salons, they're really disappointed with Boris's last announcement, which is that on the 4th of July, companies like pubs are allowed to open again, and yet really clean, sterile beauty clinics aren't. And I know that obviously getting your eyelashes done or your nails done is not the most important thing in the world, but when you think, I think, I, in fact, I think I saw it on Caroline Hyron's Instagram stories this morning, she was sharing that one in 60 jobs in the UK is within the beauty industry, and that is a lot, that is a huge amount, and the amount of money that the beauty industry brings to the UK economy every year is ginormous, so it is a real shame, and I think a lot of people in the beauty industry are self-employed, so it's going to have a huge impact. To be honest, I'm quite happy with bare nails, I've been doing so much gardening lately. I might actually try doing gel nails later though, having said that. I found an OPI pearl nail polish, so I might give myself a little bit of a pamper. I am looking forward to getting my hair coloured. You can see my mousy, 
mousy brown roots coming through and I just would rather like I'm gonna pop a picture on my on the screen here that I've got saved on my phone it's like a very soft balayage going from brown to blonde and I think that now that my brunette is quite significant it would be a good time to ask for that kind of style I think it'd be a little bit more easy to maintain seeing as we are now in the countryside and I'm not gonna be going to my London hairdressers quite as frequently so that's been my latest th why was I even talking about that I have digressed majorly oh life going back to normal and filming daily vlogs oh my goodness that was a digression um yeah so what I was going to say is that I haven't really made up my mind what I'm going to do I am noticing and feeling as though I've not got as much to show you in a day as when we first moved and at the beginning of lockdown because like now there are days on end where nothing happens because we're like waiting for deliveries or a job is halfway through being done in the house um the only thing that's happening and ticking by day by day is the painter andrew is here pretty much every day because all the pretty much all the walls in this house need painting i was joking with him saying we're probably gonna have to book you until christmas um and we probably are because even like this bedroom took nearly three weeks to do because all the wooden panels need stripping and then treating then priming and it's a lot more work than a, a normal wall because these are not normal walls there is so much more that has to go into um into this and you have to use certain types of products and um materials which are traditional to the traditional way of decorating a house like this so there's a lot more that goes into it but i'm thinking that a couple of vlogs a week would probably be enough to um fill you guys in so i'm wondering i'd like to know your opinions if i might go back to filming or uploading three videos a week from the 4th of july which is when um a few businesses are going to be opening again here in the uk not that i'm suddenly going to have a rush of work or a rush of things to do which means i can't be vlogging um but i'm thinking i might try i mean i might not stick to this i might miss vlogging so much i might try uploading vlogs on tuesdays and thursdays and a fashion video on sundays because i would quite like to get back to filming fashion videos but do you guys still want to see fashion content right now i'm not saying that i would never do fashion content again because I love it and I love talking about fashion, I love sharing fashion tips with you guys, I feel most myself when I'm talking about fashion so it's definitely not something that I ever want to stop. But is that the kind of content you're interested in watching right now? What I'm asking basically is I would just love to know your thoughts so please let me know in the comments section down below or if you want me to keep doing the daily vlogs for a little bit longer until um, Pretty much everything is open again and life really is back to normal because there is still stuff going on here that I can show you so yeah we shall see we shall see gosh I've been rambling for quite a while um, so today we have already had a few deliveries surprise surprise and <laughs> one of them is gonna be a bit of a Marmite delivery because I don't know how some of you might feel about this but there has been a particular lamp on my wish list for such a long time. I first saw this lamp um, when I went to do, actually I was shooting behind the scenes for a wedding dress photo shoot, a Philippa Lepley photo shoot at Ainho Park, which is a beautiful, I don't think it's a national trust, it's like a gorgeous um, house location place not too far from here actually and they have the most stunning ostrich feather lamps there i fell in love with one i fell in love with them as soon as i saw it um and i inquired about how much it would be and i'm pretty sure it was over ten thousand pounds it was a lot of money um i've since also seen them in harvey nichols and again the price is just staggering so when we moved here or actually just before we moved here I was thinking, oh my gosh, I really would love a lamp like that um, somewhere in the house, just as like a filming background or a really lovely statement piece in the corner of a room. But I didn't want to pay thousands of pounds for them, so I had a little look on eBay. And I typed in feather lamp, hoping to get something of the same kind of vibe. And I saw a dupe. It is obviously very much inspired by the Ainho lamps. 
and I thought, you know what, it's worth taking a risk because I can always return it if it's disgusting. I'm going to pop a picture on the screen here of the Ainho one. I think they sell it on a lovely website called Sweet Pea and Willow as well. But today my eBay version arrived. We've just unboxed it and I have to say, I don't hate it. I do not hate it. It's quite cute actually. I think I paid, I think it was over £100 so it wasn't like a mega bargain or anything, but compared to the thousands of pounds of the original, it was much more affordable. So I'm going to go downstairs and show you. Um, I think it's going to go in my dressing room but I probably won't pop it in there until the wardrobes are built and I'll show you a few other things that arrived today as well. Just while I'm up here, a little um, bathroom update. We are actually thinking, um, I know a lot of you have said how beautiful this bathroom set is and I totally agree, but Charlie and I just love um, gold fixtures and fittings. So what we might actually do is look at Charlie's <laughs> products, oh my goodness. Le Mer Concentrate, Le Mer Matte Lotion and Elemis Eye Serum. This boy has a more bougie skincare routine than I do. Um, we've got his and hers Philips Sonicare toothbrushes. In fact, I think one of my deliveries downstairs is a new one because mine has actually just stopped working. So that is perfect timing. I've been using the Max Factor Miracle Second Skin quite a lot lately as well, that's really nice. I am the queen of getting distracted today. <laughs> so what I was saying is that we might actually spray this gold. The amount of times that I've said I'm gonna spray something gold since we moved here is quite ridiculous. Um, but I thought this is such a beautiful sink, gorgeous quality, and we don't really want to get rid of them. We just would much prefer the fixtures and fittings in here to be gold. So I had a little bit of a research over the weekend and it is definitely doable. And then obviously we could just get new taps, um, a new system for the bath. We're already going to be painting these legs gold. Um, I think we could spray the pipe from the toilet gold, get a really nice dark wooden seat to match the shutters. We've had the window sills in here painted as well. But what I was going to show you, which is actually done, I think we might get rid of the B-Day as well, is the fireplace. So Andrew the decorator, you may remember that these bits inside the fireplace, there and there, used to be black and so did the base of the bath, which we're painting the same green as the bed. Um, but now, as you can see, they are white and gold. This is the same delicate white as in the bedroom. And this is actually a sample of the paint that we're going to do the feet of the bath. So I think that is going to look absolutely gorgeous. I know it's not to everyone's taste. I have been reading your comments saying that I'm ruining this historic home. We're not. We are just adding our style to it and we are being as um, sensitive to the actual history and origins of the house as possible. But let's be honest, in the 14th century, they didn't even have baths. So <laughs> I think they would be very happy indeed to see a beautiful tub with gold feet. I think we're probably just going to get a new surround for this shower and a gold um, unit here. We love the marble tiles, no point in ripping up the tray. So that's all fine. Um, in here, it really reminds you of how yellow the walls used to be in the bedroom and the bathroom. There's Charlie's pyjama shirt. Hamilton and hair. It's nice, it's kind of like a seersucker linen material. Um, and this room is now empty, ready for Charlie's wardrobes to be built. You can see her in the background. She's not going to live here. She's definitely a she, isn't she? Yeah, for sure. Um, I just want to show you my outfit of the day. It is not fashion blogger worthy at all. Um, I've literally just got on my cozy, cozy, cozy Topshop leggings and my Under the Stories white jumper and then a really chunky chain from Missima. Um, ring wise, I have got my lovely, can't remember the name of it, but this is from Rosie Fortescue Jewelry and I absolutely love it. So this is the lamp and as you can see, it is 
very 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 similar to the Ainho ones um, I chose of course I did I chose the pink plumes and they're pretty good quality actually so they are kind of like ostrich feather plumes um, you can in certain places see the light bulbs through but it does give overall a really nice glow this is probably not the best angle because you can really clearly see a light bulb there um, and then it's almost like this sprawling twig like base and you've got a little stem there which is again quite similar to the Ainho one I'm just going to flick it off a second so that you can get a better idea of the shape without the um, without the light shining through. When I first unboxed it, I thought it was gonna be absolutely shocking, but you can, of course, just tweak these. You can just kind of, you can actually pull them out and put them in different positions. This was just our first attempt, but you could definitely rearrange them and make them look even more beautiful, but there was no point in us doing that as we just um, put it together downstairs. But <laughs> what do you guys think? Am I totally mad? Should I have just saved up for the £10,000 one? I think it's actually more than that. Um, but yeah, I actually think it's quite cute. And if I've still got it, I'm going to pop a picture on the screen here of a Vogue video setup that I saw a couple of years ago and I'd always wanted to recreate that. Um, and I think they had one of these in the background of that. So that was my, my kind of inspo. But anyway, let's trot around to this area because I have today's post that I wanted to share with you. So this is my new Philips toothbrush, which I'm probably far too excited about than I should be for a toothbrush. Um, but it came with a really nice note and, and something on this note I wanted to read out because I think it's very important. As Roald Dahl once said, if you have good thoughts, they will shine out of your face like sunbeams and you will always look lovely. I thought that was a really nice quote um, and something that I definitely live by. As I've said, my channel is for positive vibes. You won't catch me um, saying nasty things about other people. So I think that's just um, yeah a good quote for everyone to remember. So I'm going to be unboxing this and using this tonight. I think a toothbrush is definitely something worth investing in and um, yeah I've had this one for about three years now if not a little bit longer and I really love it so I'm very very grateful to Philips for sending me a new one and there was also a couple of just nice bits and bobs in there as well. A pillow talk from Charlotte Tilbury lipstick. This is honestly one of the best face masks out there. This is the Glam Glow Cleansing Treatment. I've always loved Glam Glow masks. Um, a Revolution Jade Quartz uh, sorry, Rose Quartz Facial Roller. I love giving myself a nice facial massage in the mornings and in the evenings. And then this is called the Positivity Planner and it's got um, some little sections which you can fill in, some really inspiring quotes. It doesn't matter how slowly you go as long as you don't stop. Evening reflections, daily intentions, positive intentions, my top three to-dos, today's self-care moment. This is just really, really, really nice. This will make a lovely gift for someone as well. So thank you very much to the Philips team. I also had a delivery from Hawaiian Tropic. In the box there were some lovely little shells which I'm gonna save and pop them in the bathroom somewhere. I think they might have, oh no, they weren't in here. This is some reusable cotton pads which is epic because um, I use these every single day. They do get a little bit gross from makeup removal but they do wash well in the washing machine. Um, some handmade soap some bath salts, uh, a little exfoliator. These are just absolutely beautiful shells. And then the main launch is the Aloha Care new um, SPF. This is SPF 15. And they have reformulated this to be reef safe. So they now no longer have oxybenzone or octanoxate in here, which are the ingredients that kill coral. So I'm very happy to see more mainstream brands doing this. As you know, I've spoken about Cordially and... Um, Tropic before and they both have more clean formulas so it's really good to see more kind of um, en masse brands doing it as well so epic work Tropic and then I also have received my order this is not PR mail this is not gifted um, I purchased this a couple of days ago when Lydia fellow content creator launched her Glow Beauty Co and this is her first product it's the independent kit which is to help you um, prepare yourself and apply your self tanner so I think actually I'm going to take this upstairs into the boudoir and do a little first impressions unboxing with you 
Okay, so I've brought her upstairs. First of all, beautiful box. This is definitely something that I will keep and reuse. I might pop um, a couple of bits and bobs under my bedside table in here. Very, very handy. Gorgeous branding as well. When you're launching a brand, there is just so much to think about, so many decisions from your brand name to your branding. And I think Lydia has absolutely nailed it with this. Very, very chic indeed. And she's not limiting herself with what she can do with Glow. There are so many options, but I think this was <clears throat> a really lovely place for her to start. So inside the box, we have got a little bit of information. Um, she's popped a few tips on application. And again, these are just really, really gorgeous. Beautiful blush pink card, very nice indeed. It feels almost like I'm doing a Netta Porter beauty unboxing. I'm sure that's the vibe she was going for. A little bit of information on the tools, the bag, some social media information. Love Lydia, again, that is just very, very beautiful marketing materials. And then we have got, is this dark brown or black? I think it's black tissue paper. Maybe it's very dark brown. And dun dun dun, the box, so, or the bag I should say. Um, so Lydia described this as a vegan leather bag. And we have got these little toggles which say, love, love Lydia, that is so sweet. Oh, and it's nice and narrow as well. So this is gonna be really good for traveling with. And then you've got the little glow label. Okay, and here we have the products inside. So I'm gonna get these out and then we can have a little bit more of a look at the bag. So I'm one of the lucky ones that got a sample of Saint-Tropez Express Tan. That means I was one of the first 500 customers. Alrighty, so this is everything that was inside my independent kit. So first of all, the bag. This is this was probably one of the main things I was excited about because actually last year I did have an occasion where my fake tan exploded in my suitcase and ruined a beautiful dress, even though I had put it in a plastic bag. So I was very upset. Um, this case is lined in, it's got a waterproof lining, so hopefully will protect any tan explosions, which do inevitably happen from ruining other things in your suitcase. Inside, I don't know if you can see here, but there is a little zippy compartment, there is a divider, and then there are some elasticated sections there which you can pop your fake tan in. So that's really handy. Um, and then prep-wise, we have got an exfoliating glove. I swear by these and I think they are the best way of maintaining a really good tan. So I don't only exfoliate um, before I tan, but I also always use a body wash on an exfoliating glove as kind of continuation for looking after my skin when I've got a fake tan on. It just stops you from going patching, patchy um, because it keeps your, t your skin continually um, smooth. So I love a good exfoliating glove. Charlie and I currently have the pink ones from Soap and Glory, which are really good, but um, because they're pink, they do show up, um, they do get a little bit dirty, and then we do end up throwing them away. The Soap and Glory ones as well, I found that where I don't usually take all my jewellery off to shower, they sometimes just end up getting a bit, you know, threads start spilling off them. Um, but Lydia was saying these are really good quality, so I'm hoping that that won't happen with this one. And then, very excitingly, because I've never actually seen anything like this on the market before, this is a back exfoliator. And one area that I always try to get, I'm always contorting myself in the shower, is my back. The backs of my shoulders, the middle of my back. It's an area which I've not been able to reach when I'm doing my own exfoliation. So this is actually what, um, what clinched the deal for me, wanting to click purchase, because I thought this was going to come in really, really useful. We then have the products to apply the tan. This, I would say, is pretty similar to a standard um, tanning mitt or a more luxurious uh, tanning mitt. I have had tanning mitts like this in the past where they've got the waterproof lining and they're this beautiful black kind of velvet, but you normally do have to buy them separately. So sometimes your fake tan will come with a mitt, but it'll just be that really kind of basic foamy one, whereas you can buy more luxurious ones separately. But I'm always quite surprised at how expensive they are, so it's great that this is included um, one of those high quality tanning mitts. And then another really handy product for applying tan on your back. It doesn't have to be fake tan actually. If you want to apply a body lotion, then you can use this to apply that. And of course you don't need to be fake tanning to want to exfoliate your back. It's really good to exfoliate your back after a workout. So that's brilliant. And then, yeah, this is the same really lovely luxurious material 
for applying your tan on your back. It's not something that I've ever tried to do before, but I'm gonna give it a go later and let you know how I get along. So I hope you found that useful if you were thinking of picking up Lydia's um, independent kit. I'm looking forward to trying it out later. I think I'm going to have a really nice pampering shower and tanning session later, so I'll keep you posted. I've just brought you into the pink room. In here we have our first ever Facebook Marketplace item in this room. I just thought this would be really useful. It's too tall to be a bedside table. Um, I think it was like... 30 pounds or something like that. I'm not sure if I'm going to paint it. Maybe it needs to be a more crisp white like the um, like the windowsill because at the moment it's like a creamy white. And I could even, you guessed it, spray these little knobs gold so that they match the um, lights in here. But I thought this was a really handy unit. If we have any guests coming over, then they might like to put their bits and bobs in here. This is a Dyson, I think it's a Dyson... Yeah, not sure what fan that goes with. Hopefully it's not the previous owners. But I'm definitely gonna keep an eye on Facebook Marketplace for more bits and bobs in the future because um, it's quite nice to have things which are a little bit more unique than, you know, standard shop-bought things and nice to give things a second life. I know that is so hypocritical because I've been buying so much lately. In fact, in fact, <laughs> I have a confession. Today I unboxed no less than two umbrellas. I just became obsessed over the heat wave or last few days with buying umbrellas slash beach parasols and I bought two very different price points. One was around £23 and one I think was over £100. Um, they're both in the shed at the moment. I wanted to clear the hallway and make it a little bit more tidy. I also ordered three deck chairs and a cool bag from this one website in America. I had to pay quite a lot of shipping and import duties. Um, so I'm just praying that the sunshine comes back very soon so that I can use them and show you because they don't look they don't look very exciting when they're all folded up in the shed but I will show you the next time we have a sunny day. And one final thing which arrived today is this rug. This is from French Connection Home. This was very kindly gifted by the brand um, and I thought it would look it actually this rug is on my mood board for the cinema room. I'll pop that on the screen here. Um, so I thought I would just lay it out in this room to get an idea of the size. It is absolutely perfect size wise. I think that because all the floors in this house, literally all of the floors in this house are wood, um, sometimes the rooms just need a rug to make them a little bit cozier. It's nice if you don't have your slippers on to obviously um, have a rug as opposed to a wooden floor. I also quite like to sit on the floor, um, especially when watching TV. Maybe I'll have my laptop on my lap or my laptop on a low coffee table. So it's nice to sit on a rug as opposed to sitting on the wooden floor. Um, and because this is going to be our cinema room, we've got our old um, lounge television in here. It's, I think it's a Philips, it's really big. and. A rug is going to help the acoustics in here, obviously when we've got furniture we've got our lovely snug sofa and I think we're getting a couple of armchairs in here as well. I think it'll help with the acoustics in here which is very important for a cinema room but this room hopefully is getting painted next week. This was the tile that I painted um, a couple of weeks ago, you might remember a couple of weeks ago we were doing some swatches and so this is the colour that this room is going to be before too long. So um, yeah, it's going to have a total transformation. I have to say it looks a lot more kind of bright and turquoisey on camera, whereas in this room it does actually look quite a dark, almost forest green shade. Um, so imagine all the walls this colour, a lot of coppers, golds, um, really lovely velvets in this room, and then this cosy rug, some really nice, I think, um, I think we've gone for like a, a brush gold and tassely lampshade. So yeah, it's gonna have a total transformation. I think Charlie will probably end up playing PlayStation up here, watching football up here and that kind of thing. Um, and it'll just be nice to have like a secondary lounge or room to relax in. But yeah, I think the rug looks great in here. It's a really good size and it definitely adds a cozy factor.
We have lit the stove for a cozy evening. It's just gone 6 p.m. Um, and we've just popped the TV on. We're gonna have a chilled one this evening. Normally Charlie and I probably work until about seven, but we're both feeling a bit exhausted today. So feet up, literally. Dogs already in. In situ. Sucks. Where is mummy going to sit, Dexy? No, it's all for me. Silly boy. So the stove is lit and I'm about to paint my nails. I used to have a full-on kit, um, but I think I must have sent it to a charity shop at some point. So I did reorder a lamp from, um, I think I got this from eBay a couple of weeks ago. So I'm gonna give that a try. I'm going to, else, yes, I'm sure I probably could actually like actually. mine a fuchsia, fuchsia pink. Fuchsia pink, I'm sorry, I only have pearl. Not good enough. No, I'm sorry, Dexy. Dickie likes French mannequins. Yeah, <laughs> God, can you imagine? Yeah, I used to have the base coat and the top coat, um, but I only have the actual gel colour, so I'm hoping that it'll be fine just with a few coats of gel colour. I've got a nail strengthener polish on my nails at the moment, so I'm just going to take that off, and I'm going to do my cuticles with the OPI Avoplex Nail and Cuticle Replenishing Oil. Um, and then I think you're supposed to just buff your nails so that they've got a fairly smooth texture. What else have I got in here? Um, so yeah, this is a bit of an experiment. I probably should have learned how to do this way earlier in lockdown, but all of that gardening. But my nails are looking quite nice and long, so I've been using strengthening nail polish. So let's give it a go. This was my first attempt at doing gel nails at home. The shininess on my hands is the cuticle oil. Um, I think I do need to get myself a top coat because they still have a little bit of texture to them. And just after I washed my hands, they were still a little bit matte. The shininess is the um, cuticle oil. So I'm actually gonna put a layer of clear nail varnish over the top just to set them and make them shiny. And yeah. The colour is really nice, it's the OPI, I think it's called the Pearl Pearl Shine Nail Varnish, so that looks really lovely. While I've been doing that, Charlie is start- Oh, puppy dog's got hiccups! Charlie has been starting dinner. I love the smell of rice cooking. Yeah, it's nice. I always think when they're on I'm a Celebrity and they're complaining about plain rice, I'm always thinking how yummy that is, because that actually smells so good. Um, so we were sent a- oh, that's a different one. Um, a feast box, and I'm always really keen to try these. Actually, it was M. Sheldon on her Instagram. She had a chicken biryani from Feast Box, and it looked so good. I 
was desperate to try it. Um, so this is the lemon chicken that we're doing tonight. And I think the whole point of Feast Box is that it makes more, um, don't know how you describe it, but more unusual dishes doable in your own home. So whereas HelloFresh is quite classic, this is a little bit more um, different. So this is a staple of Chinese restaurants over time. Lemon chicken, a sweet sour flavor mix, a dish that originated in the humble tea restaurants of Hong Kong. We have had to add more of our own chicken and Charlie's popped a little bit of our own rice in as well because just like Pastor Evangelist, the portions are a little bit small if you have got a very hungry person in your house. So that is what we have got for dinner this evening. of the clips that I just shot because filming yourself on a tripod while you're in the shower and while you're fake tanning is just the most weird and awkward thing ever um, but I did try to show me using the back applicators in particular I know you guys know how to use a normal fake tanning mitt yeah but I thought I would try and show you so my feedback the back exfoliator was absolutely wonderful as I said, it's an area that I've not been able to exfoliate before, so that was great, really easy to use. I just laid it on the floor in the shower and like squirted my body wash all over it and then scrubbed away and that was great. My one um, bit of feedback is that I wish there were two of the exfoliating gloves. I did actually end up using one of my Soap and Glory ones at the same time because I like to rub my hands together and use like two hands when I'm doing my legs, etc. So it would have been nice to include two gloves, but when I had them on, one on each hand, I could really tell that Lydia's Glow one was a lot a lot more kind of coarse, so it was a lot more exfoliating than the Soap and Glory one, so really good especially for a pre-fake tanning shower, so that was great. And then when applying the tan to my back, something I've not ever done before aside from when I've had a professional spray tan, that was so much easier than I thought. I was expecting the tan to just kind of either plop on the floor or um, to go really patchy and me not be able to rub it in, but actually it was really foolproof. I've used my Vita Liberata Phenomenal Tan um, because that one was open and it develops over the next few hours. So hopefully I'll wake up tomorrow morning nice and bronze, but it was a great, a great tanning experience. I've popped everything back in the bag now and I'm gonna go downstairs, have some dessert and take the boys out for their evening walk. So darlings, I'm gonna end the vlog here Thank you so much for watching. I will see you tomorrow for another video. Bye.